Hello guys, God bless. Welcome back to Twist and Shout. Today I'm going to show you a process of tabbing my Bible. Uh, many of you enjoyed my DIY Bible tab video where I found free uh, print Bible tab printables and I also found a free template that I use as well. And I'm going to show you, I just discovered another template that actually fits on a single page. So I am so excited about that. So they are nice and small. Um, this is a standard size journaling Bible. And I had this print um, for a while because um, I intended to be in another Bible. But it's a good thing that I didn't actually use them because I got this one and it's almost like they are a perfect match. Like that big old flower Victorian um, look like the old Victorian style. They kind of match perfectly to this Bible and this theme. So I'm going to show you a process, but before I do that, like I said, I found a template that's free on Pinterest that I use on the printable paper. And what I did is I went in Hobby Lobby and I got different prints and colors and styles. This was one, um, which I was kind of torn between this one and the one I chose, but I ended up one with the other. This one I actually going to put in a different Bible. Um, not quite sure yet because with this one, it is very hard to see the tab, um, the names of the Bible, just like with this one, this one is almost like that, but I can see this one a whole lot better than I can see the other. Now, another alternative is because this is one sided on the tab. I can always write it out on the opposite side, um, with maybe, I don't know, I was thinking like a white marker or something, and maybe that would be better. But again, these sheets come from Hobby Lobby. They are the standard size print up paper. So they're perfect. They come, um, they usually on sale for four dollars. So a very really great deal. And every time I go, I get at least four. So I don't know. I may hold out for my other Bible. I also found this free printable. If I find it again, because I'm just I just be looking and as soon as I get it, I print. I don't save nothing. But this is another one that I found as well that um as you can see, it is very eligible. It's very light in color. And I was considering that as well for another Bible. Well, let me just show you my process very quickly. Um, how I, you know, do them so nice and neat. So first things first, I take the sheet and I cut every single last one of them out by the row. And then I cut individually and then I just fold in half. So it, it's going to be like this when you cut it out like a square. And then you just fold it like this. And I pretty much, I started out just cutting it and then... Just let them be a whole pile. Then I separate into New Testament and Old Testament. And then I start folding them accordingly. So when I'm in the Old Testament, I folded all the Old Testament ones. But let me show you this what it looks like up close. This is the size. Very nice and neat and small. Perfect for this particular Bible. And I'm going to show you. Let me zoom in very quickly. Because I'm at the top of the page, which is also awesome. And I am I just do my position based on the line i don't go any further than that some people start at the very tip i start right here at this line it's a very good guy because the line is already here now i did ran out of the original washi tape and i was so hurt this uh let me go to the top one so you can see this pretty gold that blends in pretty well i did run out of that and i don't have anything um that color but i do want to finish so i got this black and white one which isn't horrible, but if I find some more gold, I will replace it. So now that I actually placed this in the Bible, I'm just going to cut or I can cut a piece of tag because I think I got enough cut out already. Um, I just eyeball it and when it looks like it's about an inch, inch and a half, no more, then I will cut it with the scissors. But I already pre-cut some for the sake of this video. And this one's a little long, but... You know what? I might get a shorter one because I'm at the top of the page. So that's one thing you do want to pay attention to, like where your position at the top of the page. You know your tail end can't be too tall because you only have a certain amount of space. So I just position it how far I want to go out, which for me, I just want it to be out just a tad bit from when I close the Bible. Like I just want to be able to, when I open up that first page, I just want to be able to see it and read it. And that's what I usually do. So I'm just going to put this down here. And sometimes, now I will say this, this part is probably 
the most time consuming because you want to make sure that your lines look at least straight. At least I do. And again, you want to make sure that you don't go too far off the page. So that's what it looks like. Really nice and neat. And y'all know washi tape comes in different sizes. I choose the very thin one because these are small tabs and I don't want it to cover up my whole page. I just want it to place the tab down and this works perfectly. Like I go as far down on the end as I possibly can. That makes sense like such or like with this one, that's not enough for me on that end. I want, you want stability. That's the main thing. So it's, it's very important to create a balance with how you place this. So like, let me see, I'm trying to come up some more cause I want more on this end. And I got just enough where it doesn't come off my page and stick on anything else. And it actually covers, as you can see, if my camera focus. <laughs> so that's that one. Now, I did not, as you can see, I put invisible tape over this. And I saved this one for you because I want to show you the easiest way. The easiest way is just to cut, again, about an inch size. Because that's about as big as a tab is. And... I was doing it, oh, I just folded it down. No, come on, real life troubles. <laughs> okay, but I was going um, this way and folding it down, but I find that I need two pieces. But if you do this, if you just use it the long way, like this, and fold down you cover up the entire tab and then you just have to worry about cutting the size off which you have to be careful not to cut your page now normally I put the tape on before I place it on the page that way I don't have to worry about cutting it so what I do here I just get it down as far as I can and then I will actually Cut it off like such. So there you go. So as you can see, that is really nice and neat. Now I'm going to go to Second John. And Second John, I have already laminated per se. Like I already put the tape on it, the invisible tape. So now I just got to come in here and come over here. And I don't have a actual guide besides eyeballing. I just look here and I say, okay, I don't want them to touch. I don't want it to be the domino effect. I just want it to be plain and out. And I just want it to be in a row because they're small enough to do that where I do not have to do a domino effect. So what I do is I just come up here and put it where I have enough space in between where they don't touch. Then I will grab my tape. And I'm sorry about the uh, camera angle. I'm really new at doing stuff like this. I never thought I'd be teaching such things. I always wanted to be a teacher, but I always thought I wanted to be like an English teacher or something. But what do you know? Teaching is teaching, right? All right, so you place it down like that. And like I said, I try to make sure my ends are even for stability. And then I come back. And then... I come and do another and I ain't gonna lie sometimes these are not even like if I would have kept that one down I would have been fine because it has enough on this end to be secure in my opinion and then sometimes I get a little technical and I say no I want to do it again but for the most part as long as I feel like it is enough like I try not to just be right here I need at least this amount of space and I try my best to just you know, give it that anchor. Cause what, this is what's gonna hold it down. Like it's not taped down. There's no plastic or anything like how the original ones are made that you buy. The washi tape is what's gonna hold it. So you gotta make sure that your washi tape is secure. Okay, this is the third epistle of John. And I just fold my page down so I can know where I am. Come back under. And like I said, make sure I just got enough space where they don't get caught up and hang on each other. Because the one thing about these is the washi tape at first, like when you're first putting it down, um, 
may try to pop up a little bit and you want to make sure that you try to cover at least enough on the bottom of this where it holds the weight down because one thing about why I choose this paper is this paper has weight this Hobby Lobby paper it actually is sturdy it's not just plain printing paper but you can and I have used plain printing paper I would say the advantages of those is that they are lightweight and they don't weigh the page down like that and they're easier to move and maneuver so there you go so, but as you can see, I still can, you know, I can flip. I still have that effect if I want to, like I was trying to look through. But one thing about uh, placing them neatly down instead of stacking them, I can just come like this and I can pretty much go like by row and read like that and see which book of the Bible is which. Because um, if you've been in your Bible as long as I have, you pretty much have an idea like um generally uh unless i'm having a brain fart <laughs> i know if a book is uh king james or uh i'm sorry not king james <laughs> um if a book is new testament or old testament there you go see it's early all right, I got one more for you that I want to show. This is one that I did not fold. This is Jude. So it comes like this when you cut the square shape. And then it has a line in the middle to help guide you. So you just fold down on the line. And then I have a piece of tape here where I'm going to come. Not all the way down because I want to watch you take the stick on this paper. Because on this paper, this paper is glossy. And it's a little silky. So it won't stay initially. And then my access tape, I will cut that off. So then I can just come in here. And come back and see where I am as far as space. And then I come in. And now I have to cut some more washi tape because I ran out. So like that piece is a good size. Put that there. And I actually need two more. I'm sorry, I need three more. Well, let me just do this one, right? So I'll show you guys. And again, I'm trying to get as far to the end as possible, enough where it would anchor it down and also have an, a decent amount of stick to the page where it won't pop up that's probably going to be your biggest things you're going to pay attention to if you wear glasses please put them on because they do help or you got a magnifying glass or something something that helps you zoom in to see where you are another thing i've also done let me show you in the next one which is the last one as you can see this one needs tape and i gotta find my tape now where is my tape did i put it away i think i did one second. And I'm rearranging in here. So it's like, sure, how could you? Okay. I got it. All right. So again, I'm going to move this. I think I need about that much to be enough. And then I'm going to place it on the end here. And make sure I got space for the washi tape below. Fold down. Cut the additional tape. And then another way you can do is you can take the washi tape. If I can find where I was. There you go. Take the washi tape. Cut your piece. And then go ahead and place it down here, right? So you can know exactly how far on or off you are. And sometimes when I remember I do this, but sometimes when I'm on the road, I'll be honest with you, like this does not be on my mind to do, but this makes it extremely convenient. Cause as you can see, when you turn it over, I don't know if you can see that you have enough space where it's covered and you have enough place to stick to the page. So then you just, uh, 
come in here, you close that page down, you see where you are, and you're like, okay, I got space. So you place it on the page as far down as you want. And again, for me, I'm just, I try to be to the edge there. So then I'll come back with my final piece. Come on. And sometimes too, I try to make my back piece longer than my front piece for that extra, hey, I don't need you to go anywhere. So there you go. All right, and then as you can see, I'm directly at the tip of the page, which is nice and neat so it doesn't interfere with what I have going on over here. So I am officially done. Let me just zoom out for you so you guys can see. That's what it looks like. And again, you can get the kind of paper you want. I know my sister, she's saying she's gonna go for a lighter color so she can actually read um, the letters and things okay. And look cleaner for me, like I said, is a matter of, you know, matching. I'm real big on matching. So this is what it looks like. All right, there you go. All right, so hopefully I help someone. Like I said, if you're on a budget like me, stay at home mom, um, financial issues, but you, you know, you want to make your Bible unique and yours you want to tab this is a really inexpensive way you can have you probably already have tape but invisible tape is what a dollar like i said these pages are four for a dollar so if you want to tab more than one page that's fine if you have access to a printer whether at home or a local library and a template is free online then you can literally have tabs for less than three dollars and multiple tabs because if you get four for a dollar on the paper like me, you can actually tab four different Bibles. So, or you can have seasons where maybe you want to change them. Who knows? Choice is up to you. But there you go. I already took too long as it is. That's my Bible and that's my tabs. I absolutely love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.